What does it mean to you to be the first and only openly gay woman in WWE? Wow, I always get asked this question and then like, I, I don't know how to answer it because I'm always like, oh, I guess I'm a role model, but my goal with, uh, I guess, um, talking about my sexuality publicly is just that um, the scared little girl that I was four years ago before I came out on WWE Tough Enough, a little girl like that at home or a little boy can see me do it and be like, wow, well, if she did it, then maybe it's okay that I do it. And it's just to in encourage people to be themselves and the equality for all is what we should all want between race, religion, gender, sexuality, it doesn't matter. It's just we're all equal and we should treat each other, each other as such. Um, and so that's just my message overall. And if you could just tell us a little bit about your experience, because for people that don't know, oh, so yeah. you mentioned Tough Enough there. Yeah, so I started uh, through a reality show called WWE Tough Enough. Uh, Mandy and I were both actually on it. I ended up being eliminated third, but during the preliminary taping of the first premiere episode, they asked me if I was in a relationship. And I had a girlfriend at the time, and I, I was like, whoa, I wasn't expecting that question. Are you in a relationship or single, or what's your? I'm in a relationship. Uh, I'm not, I don't have a wife yet, but I have a girlfriend. Christina, I love you. And um, to all my friends in high school, because they don't know that I'm a lesbian yet, this is kind of my coming out party. Woo! <laughs> you me sweat a little bit. You want us to put that on the internet now or wait? I mean, go ahead. It was just one of those spontaneous moments that it surely wasn't planned, but I'm so grateful that it happened because after that, it not only gave me a new realization of what it means to be open and true to myself, but I feel like it helped me inspire other people. Like, if you're scared to do it, my advice would be do it because it was the best thing that's ever happened. I'm not saying there's not going to be trials and tribulations along the way, but in the end, the best life you can live is a life where you're true to yourself. Well, on that, because I know you said before that people, you know, a lot of girls and women tweet you and you kind yeah, of get yeah. back to them. And I mean, how does that make you feel? You're an inspiration to these young girls. Yeah, uh, it, it makes me feel amazing. I mean, um, I have this one little girl that tweeted me um, this, this whole long thing a while ago that she came out to her parents and that they, they weren't so accepting at first, but they've come around and she never would have done it, you know, had it not been for her seeing me do it on a public platform. So. I mean, if I can have that influence to one person, a hundred people, a thousand people, a million people, whatever the influence is, I'm, I'm grateful to be that person. And how do we make it less of a thing and more of the norm? Yeah, that's a good question and that's a, it's an ongoing hunt and an ongoing search. I don't know the answer, but what I'm going to do to make it more the norm is just you, you accept everybody. You treat everyone equal. And um, I always like to compare it to, to sports, right? Because if you're on a soccer team with someone and you pass the ball to them and they score and you're excited and having a good time, do you ever think of their sexuality? Do you ever think of their race, their religion? You don't overthink any of that as, as a child, right? So we're not born hating others. We're, we're taught it and we're um, impressioned at young ages from the media and stuff like that. So if we know that we're born pure and I believe that, that then why do we learn to hate others for, for no reason, you know, because of a skin color, because of ethnicity, any, anything. So I, I always use that, that reference because to me that just seems so obvious. Like, don't judge people for things that don't matter. They should be irrelevant. They shouldn't be, uh, you know, whether someone's a good person or a bad person has nothing to do with all those things I just named. So judge them based off of that. And we have a campaign in the UK called Rainbow Laces where people involved in sport wear these rainbow color laces to show their support for LGBT equality and inclusivity. So cool. How important are campaigns like that? Oh, they're amazing. And the, the, the subtlety of a campaign like that, I mean, it's them wearing rainbow laces, but the message spreads so wide. And, and I think it's so important to get those to people on, on a public platform because um, as much as we don't like to admit it sometimes, we are the influencers. Everything is social media nowadays. Everything is sports and entertainment. So I think it's awesome when people with such a big platform use it for such a positive message. And I'd love to wear those laces if I can. Of course you can. We've got you very oh, own pair. Thank you. That's so awesome. <laughs> so I wear them in the ring, I was just telling you before, it's so funny. I am actually getting new shoes to wear in the ring and I just laced them with rainbow boot laces. There so we go. It's meant to be. It's meant to be. This is so <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. That Thank was perfect. You. Thank you.